learners and listeners welcome to nios i am dr shweta and today we are going to discuss our next lesson which is play center and its objectives it is lesson number 27 module 6b in the last program we have tried to orient ourselves about the characteristics and needs of children during early childhood we have seen how these characteristics change with age and how the child feels more equipped in every respect as the child grows physically the child can now move around with greater ease so much so that the child becomes quite handful for the mother the child is also curious and therefore likes to explore and ask many questions child starts talking interest in other children and wants to be with them is the mother equipped enough to take care of the growing child can the child be helped what kind of school be chosen for children at this stage etc these are just a few of the questions that we will try to orient ourselves in this lesson so the objectives of today's program are that at the end of this program you will be able to define first of all what is a play center second uh, you would be able to explain the need for a play center that is why it is required you would also be able to enumerate the objectives of a play center as well as how to handle children in the play center and at last we would be discussing that how to deal with the behavioral problems in the children uh, in the play centers let us try to understand first of all the meaning of a play center what is it a play center is a place which provides children with certain facilities for example toys play space etc and that allows them to explore and experiment provides a meeting ground for uh, many children and therefore enhances the all round development of each child the focus is not on formal teaching but on learning through play the environment is friendly and stimulating the play center caters to 2 to 5 years old who come for 2 to 3 hours each day so you can say that play centers are actually child uh, centered units that is they give emphasis to the uh, children and they allow children to progress at their own pace the play center also focuses on the holistic development of the child that is how the child uh, talks how the child behaves what the child learns what is the child's physiological development what is the children's uh, psychological needs how they collaborate with others uh, in the play center the play center invites independent and group learning through play exploration and investigation that is the children are learning on their own that is they are independent they are uh, allowed to do whatever they want to do under the supervision of their uh, teachers and uh, the group learning uh, takes place in through the plays uh, that the children are involved in in the play centers they explore through those plays and uh, they investigate as well that why it is so how it is so etc therefore learning becomes more enjoyable in the play centers play centers helps to sustain motivation for school and schooling because it is actually giving a platform to the children that this is how a school looks like or this is what they would be doing when they go to a big school we just discussed that what is a play center but we must know that what play center is not that is what play center is not responsible for for example play center is not a miniature primary school it is not a primary school a play center uh, where teacher centered education is encouraged that is not done in the play center because we discussed in the previous slides that they are child centric units a play center where passive learning and blind obedience is required because we have already discussed that in the play centers uh, the children are independently learning on their own uh, under the supervision of their teachers as well as they are learning through plays uh, they are learning uh, with the help of uh, uh, other children who are around them they are exploring and investigating so that means they are not uh, simply uh, obeying what is being said but they are trying to Uh, explore things on their own 
So it is an active learning and not a passive learning. Now we have understood that what is a play center, we must know that what are the needs and basis for a play center, why it is required. There are certain unique characteristics of the learning process of 2 to 5 year olds that demand a play center. These characteristics are, for example, the children learn naturally through play because this is the tendency of the child. If you force the child to learn something, the child will not learn. But if the child is allowed to learn through play, the child will have a better understanding. The children learn best by doing things. They will not be able to understand what the other person is saying. But if they do something on their own, they would be, that would be best learning. And the children attention span is not very long. That is, that is uh, 7 to 15 minutes only. So keeping in mind all this, the play centers plan their programs uh, which meets the demand of the uh, little children. The brain at 3 years is 80% of adult brain mass facilitating maximum learning. Hence, they need a stimulating environment at this stage and this is what the play center is providing. So through its activities, children learn easily from each other and from older children, from adults and from the physical environment as well which is proven as, uh, which is proven also. Now what are the objectives of a play center? By now, you must have understood the objectives and needs of play center and how it usually works. Now take a paper and pencil and write as many lines as you can. Compare, compare your list with ours given below. That is, whatever, uh, whatever I am showing you on the PPT, please compare your list with that. These following are the objectives of the play center. For example, the objective of the play center is to provide the child opportunities to explore and experiment with a variety of activities, objects and places. It's another objective is to provide opportunities for rich and positive interaction with peers, group and adults. Play centers also provides a secure and supportive environment for the holistic development of children and also encourage active rather than passive learning in children. This is what we have already discussed also. Uh, these, are structure, these structure the experience according to the developmental level of the children. So uh, in the play center, there are age appropriate activities and uh, play centers uh, objective is to allow children to learn and grow at their uh, own rate without making learning. Uh, stressful and yet provide enough challenge to sustain motivation and interest. This, the, these are what the little activities in the play center are. Uh, they promote self-control and discipline in the child and also help in the transition from home to formal school. That is in the play center, the play center is the first place where the child leaves the home and starts getting involved with the peer group. So it is a platform that this is what is going to happen when the child leaves the play center and has to go to the uh, formal school. Uh, they provide the children with opportunities to explore and experiment with a variety of activities, objects and places because they are giving a stimulating environment to the children for their uh, growth and development. They also provide opportunities for rich and positive interaction with peer groups and adults and provide a secure and supportive environment for the holistic development of children. Uh, play centers, another objective is to encourage active rather than passive learning in the children and uh, uh, because they are, they, they are learning through play, they are actively involved in what they are learning. They also structure the experience according to the development level of the children and allow the children to learn and grow at their own rate without making learning very stressful or ye and yet they are providing enough challenges to, this, to sustain motivation and interest. Play centers also promote self-control and discipline in the children and help in the transition from home to formal schooling. You must also be familiar with the document which is new education policy. Uh, there are certain objectives of early childhood care and education that are mentioned in this document. You must also be familiar with the document which is new education policy. Uh, there are certain objectives of early childhood care and uh, education that are mentioned in this document. One must read them carefully and see that what is required for the children at this age.
Another important area is handling children in the play center because it is the first time that children are coming out of the secure environment of their houses. One of the objectives of the uh, play center that we have discussed is to allow children the freedom to explore the environment. You might say that to achieve this objective, the child should be allowed to roam around freely. If you had 20 children in the play center, can you imagine uh, what will happen if you were to leave everyone free to do what they feel like doing? Some kind of discipline is needed for the child to feel secure in any environment. Hence, the child should be told uh, the boundaries of uh, acceptable and unacceptable behavior. The caregiver needs to promote constant supervision and ensure that the child while exploring does not hurt uh, themselves or others around them. There are three basic forms of discipline that can be uh, enforced uh, and these are uh, the following disciplines. First is the authoritarian discipline, second is the permissive discipline and uh, third is the democratic discipline. Let's understand that what are these, what are the differences in these three types of disciplines. So first is the authoritarian discipline. When this kind of discipline is enforced, the child is uh, directed to do uh, and what not to do and uh, no explanations are offered. That is whatever you are saying the child has to uh, obey by that and uh, ex it is expected in the authoritarian discipline that the child should show complete obedience. The child cannot question the rules and regulations. Have you seen this kind of discipline at home? Who enforces it? Do you think a caregiver in a play center can enforce this kind of discipline? Yes, the caregiver can. With authoritarian discipline, children will be expected to do only what the caregiver tells them. And as I have said earlier, it is complete obedience without exception and question. Children do not feel happy in this type of environment. Can you say why? Because they have no freedom to do things. They would like to do things on their own. They would want to be free. But yes, when they are free, that should be under expert supervision. If children are checked too often, they do things quietly and behind the back of the caregiver. They also learn to tell lies because they know they are not allowed to do certain things. They are always questioned for uh, whatever they are doing. If children are all the time told what to do and what not to do, they become dependent. They always look for instructions and never grow up. Now, this was the authoritarian discipline. Let's now have a look at the permissive discipline. This is exactly opposite to the authoritarian kind of discipline. Now, what happens in the permissive discipline? The child would be allowed to do whatever the child feels like doing. That is whatever gives the child pleasure. So the child is free to do anything. There are no rules and no guidance or no explanations provided and uh, the child is doing whatever the child is uh, wanting. Can you tell the implications of this kind of discipline in the play center? Yes. The children in this kind of discipline will get into the habit of not listening to anybody, not obeying any commands and do whatever pleases them. This type of behavior will make them self-centered and selfish. Also, there would be no guidance from the caregiver. Children can also go astray or pick up wrong habits. So, what should be done? There is another kind of dis discipline which is known as democratic discipline. This kind of discipline is in between the two that we have already discussed which is the authoritarian discipline and the permissive discipline. Can you on your own think of some characteristics of uh, uh, democratic discipline? By the time you think over the democratic discipline, let me, uh, uh, let me make you understand what actually democratic discipline is. In the democratic discipline, rules are explained before they are enforced. That is, the caregiver is enforcing certain rules, is uh, giving the boundaries and limitations to the children. But the rules are also explained, that is the children 
आर गिवन एक्सप्लेनेशन दैट वाई दे आर नॉट अलाउड टू डू सर्टेन थिंग्स एंड वाई दे आर अलाउड टू डू सर्टेन अदर थिंग्स चिल्ड्रेन हैव ऑलवेज द फ्रीडम टू क्वेश्चन द रूल्स एंड द सेम रूल्स कैन बी मॉडिफाइड विद जॉइंट कॉन्सेंट दैट इज इफ द चाइल्ड सीज दैट वाई दिस इज डन लाइक दिस आई डो नॉट लाइक दिस सो द इफ इफ द केयर गिवर फील्स इट एप्रोप्रिएट देन certain rules can be modified the children uh, in in the democratic discipline are allowed freedom to do things on their own but they have to ensure that they do not hurt themselves or others around them what do you think would be the advantages of such a discipline yes you are right children will learn to obey and respect rules develop confidence in themselves learn to take initiative and work independently and children also learn to take their turns cooperate and have patience you may find this type of discipline in the family just observe any such family and see how children are disciplined now this was all about that what are the different kinds of discipline that can be enforced or that can be used with the children to deal with them in the play center but as we know they they are the small little children so there are certain behavioral problems with those children let us understand what are those behavioral problems young children often demonstrate behaviors which are inappropriate for example a child may be in a habit of hitting everybody around him or her the child will be breaking things abusing telling lies etc these are the behaviors which not only harm children physically but also make them unpopular with other children there are many causes that can be behind such behaviors uh these can be the first is sometimes it is observed that when children live in an environment which forbids any self expression they pick up behaviors which are unacceptable that is when you are enforcing very rigid rules then the children uh, loses their self expression and they pick up behaviors that are unacceptable when the parents and teachers expect too much from the ch children that is they are enforcing their own expectations on the children or they are expecting too much from the little children and they are not able to keep up the expectation that is the child is not able to meet the expectation of the either the parent or the children then also they show unacceptable behaviors you might have seen uh, children uh, lying down on the roads or on the floors uh, asking for whatever they want wo at whatever time that means often children learn that the unacceptable behaviors are the tools to get what they want that is sometimes it has been seen that when children show such kind of behavior then uh, in order to stop them from doing this the uh, parents give in to their demands so when the parents given to their demands then uh, the children learn that if they show such kind of behaviors then whatever they want will be granted to them so uh, these are certain behaviors that children learn these are certain things that children learn and they try to uh, execute these behaviors in order to uh, fulfill their demands from the parents or the caregivers a disturbed family environment is another reason for a child uh, for a child's misbehavior that is when the child sees parents quarreling with each other then the child uh, start showing unacceptable behavior when there is crisis in uh, a child's life the crisis can be anything for example the children show unacceptable behavior on birth of another sibling they might feel that all the importance and attention is being uh, taken away from the from uh, the first child and that is being given to the new sibling uh, then also they might show uh, the mis um, they might misbehave children may also develop unacceptable behavior because physically they are not able to cope up with the uh, with the uh, demands of the situation around them so we need to be very careful about the uh, these uh, little things about the children so dear learners this was all about today's program uh, but before i end up i would like to summarize that what we did in today's program we could know that uh, what are the different objectives of play centers what are the play centers and what they are not 
they are actually the structured unit which are providing uh, the uh, freedom to the children under the supervision of the caregiver and uh, uh, they are giving stimulating environment for the holistic development of the children. Uh, we also talked about that uh, what are the uh, different types of disciplines that can be enforced in the play center and we could understand that the democratic discipline is between the permissive and the authoritarian discipline and if uh, uh, it is uh, uh, used in the play centers or in dealing with the children then they would uh, develop more appropriate behaviors in them. We also discussed that there are certain causes like uh, a disturbed family environment, birth of a new sibling or crisis in a uh, child's life that might contribute to the uh, misbehavior of children uh, in the play centers or anywhere else. So we need to understand any such uh, causes which can be behind the misbehavior of uh, the little children and how we can deal with uh, this so that the child can come out the difficult period if uh, the child is in uh, such a period so. So with this uh, I end up for today's program. Uh, this is all for today. Thank you.